All of the sales this weekend help negate the insane prices of memory and the still recovering prices of GPUs. We decided to put together an ultra budget build, sub $500 depending on when you check the prices, and we decided to do a couple different tests with it while we were at it. One of them is with a GTX 1050, the other one's with an RX 560, and then we did a separate test with one stick of memory versus two at the same capacity and timings to see if buying one and saving a few bucks would actually be worth it on a budget build. For the base platform, we're using a G4560 and an HD3 motherboard. And as always, we'll have links to each product in the description below, along with an article version of this video. Before getting to that, this content is brought to you by the Thermaltake Flow RGB Closed Loop Liquid Cooler, which is a 360 millimeter radiator plus 3120 fans that are RGB illuminated. The Thermaltake Rain fans at that. This is a 4.5 gen Azatec pump, which is one of the faster pumps. You can learn more at the link in the description below. So for most of the year, prices have been volatile, but mostly in an upward direction, unfortunately. They've been kind of volatile the last few days, though, just from things going on sale and coming off sale. The long story short of it is, originally, a couple days, one day ago, two days before this goes live, the build we put together was $430 on uh, Newegg and Amazon using all the different rebates and sales. Currently it's 450, but that's gonna go up and down, especially because when this goes live, it'll be Cyber Monday and everything's gonna change again. So price is kind of loose, but basically we're going for under 500. And you may need to choose different parts from uh, different vendors, but they can still be the same capacity or GPU or whatever. It'll be roughly the same. To go over the basics, we're using an EVGA 450 BT 80 plus bronze power supply. That power supply sells for $45, currently has a $10 rebate if you count them, whatever, not a big deal. But when we first put the build together, it had a $30 rebate and some other discount and it came out to 12 bucks, which is absurd. Uh, it's because it's not even like, it's not even the type of $12 power supply that will catch on fire. It's actually rated for some kind of efficiency. Not much, but it's there. For the case, we chose the Corsair 270R. This one performs pretty well in our review when we combine it with our 570X review. And we have some thermal numbers for this case as well in that review. The 270R shipped at $70 and we liked it well enough then, but now it's about $55 with sometimes a rebate that brings it down to 45, which is about the price of a 200R. So that's a really good deal if you can get it at 55 to 45. It has decent ventilation plenty for this system. It's perfectly fine for this setup, and it's actually a decent quality case. You could go cheaper. You could do a $25, $30 case, and people like to point this out when we do budget builds. They're like, why would you use a $40, $50 case? Well, building is somewhat subjective, and my thing with these types of builds is I want a case that's not complete garbage. $50 gets you a pretty good entry-level case, Yes, you could spend $10 less or $15 less, but the threshold for quality between that $10 or $15 is massive. And going for something like a 200R, which is a great case for the price, means you can actually keep using it and not have to upgrade it going forward. All these other parts are pretty modular. You really don't want to upgrade your case because you're rebuilding the entire computer. So that's, that's my look on it. If you want to buy a cheaper case, there are options out there. I'll even link one below that I think is halfway decent, but uh, I would recommend going with a slightly higher quality one if you can stretch the dollar an extra 10 or 15 bucks. Memory, we went with G-Skill Rip Jaws 5, eight gigabytes of DDR4 2400, which is all you need for a G4560. And that memory when we first chose it was $75. Today it's 90, but there's other memory kits of the same spec at 75, so again, just, if it's not the price we said it was when we filmed this, uh, go find the exact same thing by a different vendor or whatever for the same price. For the motherboard, Gigabyte B250 HD3. We've used it before, it's this one right here. Uh, pretty simple board, doesn't overclock, you don't need it to, and it's $55 after a somewhat substantial $20 rebate, 75 before, wouldn't really recommend it at 75. But if you do rebates, it's worth it. Or if uh, your retail does it, then it's worth it if you can get it that price from your local retailers. RX 560 or GTX 1050 for the video cards, $110 on the 560 after rebate, 112 flat for the 1050, no rebate required. 124, I think for the 560 without a rebate, which is not terrible either. So let's talk about the one versus two stick testing. For a lot of PC builders who've been doing this for a while, 
From experience, I know that it feels wrong to just put one stick in a board. It's a little bit asymmetrical, and you hear all the time, uh, well, I mean, it's just you know that there's dual channel support. So it feels weird to not use that. We've done this testing before. I did it again in a budget build this time. And basically, uh, the decision was in a memory market where one eight gigabyte stick might cost a couple dollars less, like, I mean, as much as $20 less in some of the prices we saw than two four gigabyte sticks. We thought it'd be worth testing it and seeing if it matters. Uh, it comes down to channeling. So to clear up a common misconception while we're at it, a lot of people say the phrase single channel memory or multi ch or dual channel memory, quad channel memory. They put the word memory at the end of those things. The memory is not any channeling. The memory doesn't care. It, 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 there's no such thing as dual channel memory or quad channel memory. It does not exist. What does exist is sticks of memory and then you put it into the platform and then that platform with its CPU will be a certain channeling capability. In this case, we can go up to dual channel. So going down to one stick, you lose half that obviously. Uh, so we're gonna be testing that. And then one big reminder on memory, the results you see here are not conclusions that you can draw across all platforms. You cannot draw these conclusions across the high end with higher end cards. Can't draw them across X399 or 299. We're just looking at this low end platform to see how the memory channeling through the platform, dual versus single from the motherboard, affects performance. Uh, so let's get started with the game Destiny 2 at 1080p for all of these games. Starting with Destiny 2, we found the GTX 1050 was capable of achieving about 60 FPS by playing at 1080p with medium settings, whereas the RX 560 operated an average FPS closer to 47. This was also with considerably greater frame time intervals. The GTX 1050 ends up with a 27% lead, largely thanks to the new NVIDIA drivers that helped out a lot, and holds close to 60 FPS. Going down to one memory stick, we see that the GTX 1050 maintains all of its FPS effectively. We don't really experience a performance hit in Destiny 2 by going down to a single channel, aside from a measurable but unnoticeable difference in 0.1% low values. We're also only going to be testing one stick configurations with the fastest card in each game. There's no point in doing the slower one because probably gonna be bottlenecked on that one anyway. Moving on to Sniper Elite 4 at 1080p and high settings, the RX 560 expectedly manages to win this one given that Polaris does well with DirectX 12 and Async Compute. The RX 560 ends up 9.8% ahead of the GTX 1050. As for single channel performance, the RX 560 with one stick of RAM ends up at roughly identical performance to the dual stick configuration and is completely within variance of tests. Total War is next. This one was run at 1080p with high settings. The GTX 1050 maintains a lead of about 13.7% over the RX 560 here, with more consistent frame times represented in the 0.1% low values. Going down to a single stick brings our GTX 1050's frame rate down to 56.7 FPS, which is just outside of our margin of error. We lose about 2% of performance in this more CPU intensive title by going to one stick. With Doom using Vulkan on ultra settings and with no anti-aliasing, but with async compute, it does work without AA, the RX 560 leaves the GTX 1050 way behind. Like Sniper, the card is again benefiting from lower level APIs. The RX 560 ends up being over 60 FPS, nearing 70, while maintaining ultra settings at 1080p. That's about a 50% lead over the GTX 1050 2GB card, which also suffers in low end frame time performance in this test. Removing a stick of memory equates roughly the same performance with no appreciable difference for the RX 560. To flip the script, the GTX 1050 leaves behind the RX 560 in Rocket League, we found. With high settings at 1080p, the GTX 1050 manages 134 FPS average with lows at 95 and 73 FPS for 1% and 0.1% respectively. Going down to a single stick of memory drops us to 127 FPS average from 134, a reduction of 5.5%. This is the most noteworthy change we've seen thus far and is because the game is a little bit more memory or CPU intensive than some of the others. Shadow of War needs medium settings in order to maintain 40 FPS in our testing and is one of the more abusive titles on the bench. Both the RX 560 and GTX 1050 performed at 41 FPS average, which is probably largely thanks to the CPU. It looks like we're becoming CPU bound here. So they are functionally equivalent. Removing a stick from the GTX 1050 test system saw the same performance for no change in this title. We also have some synthetic results for what is worth. The first chart is Firestrike, 
In this one, our RX 560 option, priced at $110 after rebate, 124 before, is led by the 1050, which has a 3.4% lead in graphics score. Going down to one stick, we ended up behind the two stick test, with invariance actually, and that's the graphics score. Looking instead at the CPU score, we dropped about 7 FPS off of it and consistently and repeatedly saw that. This result is a 38% decline in performance from the CPU test, showing where the change hurts the most. In memory intensive and CPU bound scenarios where memory is heavily transacted, the multi stick configuration helps. The next and final chart is for Time Spy. For this one, the RX 560 holds a slight lead over the GTX 1050, and the single stick results are as shown on the screen. So that's it for the build. This one's a bit different. Normally we do builds as kind of like, here's the parts, but this one we've got a couple different options for you. So we'll leave it up to you. Uh, as far as the memory configuration, that one's pretty cut and dry for the most part. Generally speaking, in the games we just tested with a G4560 and with one of these cards, not a lot of difference between one and two sticks at the same capacity and timings. That can change uh, as you see in some of the tests, like some of the CPU bound items where we drop some frame rate, but it just depends on if you know what kind of games you're gonna be playing, uh, if they're gonna be affected. Generally speaking, it looks like not necessarily. I hesitate to say buy one stick, because again, there's that stigma that as a PC builder for a long time, you do kind of feel like it's not worth doing one because you don't want to risk running into one of those memory bound tasks and really suffering for it. That said, if you're on a serious budget and you can only afford one today and dropping $15 off the price of your memory gives you the next class up in GPU or CPU, that's a considerable change and might be worth doing because you can always pretty easily add another stick later. Just do it within the next couple months, and as long as the prices don't behave the way Bitcoin does, you'll be in good shape if it doesn't skyrocket another 5x. Uh, if it goes down, which is more likely thanks to Samsung spinning up more fabs, then you'll end up saving money in the long run. But that's the only one where there's a, a pretty cut and dry scenario. The 1050 and the RX 560, do, they change who wins based on what game it is. So. Uh, Doom 560 is in the lead, Rocket League 1050 is in the lead, and otherwise the differences aren't normally too big. So that's it for this one. Uh, all the links will be in the description below for each of the products if you like them. We've reviewed most of these before or worked with them. And as always, patreon.com slash gamersnexus helps out directly. You can subscribe for more, or you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one, or one of our stickers, both of which are on sale for the next week or so. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.